I want to raise this. Maybe not right now. Maybe, Maybe not right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only person in the world who's like five minutes, five minutes, like do anything five minutes. Well, she, she told me on the phone the other day, I can get anywhere in five minutes. You yep. need me to take you, when I was getting my shot, you need me to take you, I can be there, I can be anywhere in the world in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I can't believe that you could be no. <laughs> anywhere in five minutes. In my head, I'm there. Yeah. See, label is in the rainbow. Okay. I got you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. We like our LGBTQ. So is somebody going to make an announcement about it in celebration of LGBTQ? We're all in that. We're all in that. We're all in that. Hello. Hello, Facebook friends. I might start off the show standing up so I can show your shirt. Claim of my... Um, I have a. Oh, who put a, who put a straw in my drink? Cooler along the coast as the breeze starts to turn on shore. A lingering shower, a few sunny breaks. Yeah. Tomorrow night, there can be a brief shower, a low of 68. That. That'll be about the high temperature <laughs> Thursday along the coast. Much cooler, drier with a refreshing Canadian air mass, sunshine, <laughs> mid and upper 70s well inland. On the there There's so many of them crossing the breaks. A yeah. brief shower in the area, high of 69. Yeah. For WATD, I'm meteorologist Rob Gilman. 82 degrees outside our South Shore studio. 612, that's local news. I'm Christine James. Stay tuned for Sharon McNamara and talk real estate right here, 95.9 WATD. Now, talk real estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. All right, 90 seconds. Hi, I'm Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background. And did you get a copy get of our um, agenda or owner you? of Boston Connect Real Estate? Uh, let me go check my email right now. If you sent it, I probably did. Real estate sales and marketing consultant who service home buyers and home and did. throughout did Boston, it, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my real estate team member, Mary Baker, and I, along with the director of Boston Connect Real Estate, Melissa Very Wall, nice looking. I like this agenda. Unique marketing approach like to the selling agenda? homes and share with you our expertise in navigating... I'm a sucker for structure. What can I say? I to mix it up sometimes. I so didn't hear you. Will you hear our I said I'm a sucker for structure. What can I say? Uh, well, we actually have this every week we should send it to you at boston connect Real we have somebody calling in at, at that we 6 30. his name is frank team. but we're going to call him john during the show please john it is one, uh do you want me to do the regular oh, thing and just text call. melissa yeah. and you let you let him know when you're uh, let you know when he's on the line yes that would be great no problem round table if you I mean, like his name is George, and we're going to call him. And my team, John. or one of the dedicated agents at Boston no, Connect Real Estate, names mixed up. your real estate needs, you can connect with Just them. remember, hey, you and that guy always works. 826-8000. Yes. Awesome. I say now, handsome. Sit back, hey, handsome. Relax, take good notes, and let's talk. Here we go. And hello to all my South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable here with my crew. I have Mary Baker. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are awesome. you? Awesome. I'm doing great. And we have the one and only Mel's Bells. How are you? Hello. Hi. Hello. Yes. Yay. And we're all here tonight, uh, which is nice because, well, we've been, the three of us have been pretty much. We're the three best friends that I've yeah. ever had. Today is, um, uh, it's either national or international, whatever. Uh, best, best friends day. Oh, well, that's nice. High yeah. fives, ladies. Perfect. Hello. Hello. And Melissa bought us t-shirts. I don't know if everybody on Facebook. Mary and I, last year, uh, Dustin has one. If Dustin's watching or listening, he yeah. has one too. Uh, and it's uh, it says, I like the wine, not the label. So yes. if you are a Schitt's Creek fan, <laughs> Which uh, everybody like, should like be. Mary and I are, uh, there's my spirit animal, uh, David Rose. It's uh, <laughs> a scene with him and, and it has to do with, um, you know, LGBTQ. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so with it being uh, uh, you know, Pride Month, we thought that we would uh, bust these bad boys out and wear yeah. it on the show. And uh, yeah, 
This yes. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Yeah, if you yes. haven't watched the show, watch it because I have a it lot of pride hilarious. wearing my shirt, my yeah. pride shirt. I wore mine all day, sweating profusely <laughs> <laughs> outside. I went to uh, gardening. Uh, yeah, well, not gardening. I just picked out the flowers, but I think they look pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, um, they do. Yeah, so I went to um, Sunshine Gardener, Garden, Garden, uh-huh. Garden, something in Kingston, and uh, they had a really great selection. Question. So um, if you're looking for flowers go over there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You do such a good job and everything looks beautiful. So if you want to see what our office looks like, you can always visit us. We're right in Pembroke center, even though we service all of the South shore here at Boston connect real estate, who is the proud sponsor of talk real estate Roundtable. Um, yeah, come on by. If you're in the center of town, just swing in. So talk we about, like visitors. yeah, we love visitors. And we had somebody swing in two weeks ago today mm-hmm. about 15 minutes before the show went live. Yeah. <laughs> he knew Same what we could be found on Tuesdays. Yeah. 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 Well, he said that he listens to the show and we were like, all right, well, we can have a quick chat and then we're going to go do the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so he is listening tonight and he is actually going to be calling in and his name is John. He just lives on uh, one of the local South Shore towns. Um, so he said that he wanted to come on in and he wanted to discuss the possibility of putting his house on the market. And uh, so we just thought that this would be a nice, because when I met with him, I've met with him twice now. Um, and we're, you know, we text all the time because we're friends. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so we're now best friends. We're now best friends. And um, he's, I said, you should come on the show with us and just tell us about your experience. And I want to let you know, I haven't asked him what his experience was yet. So he could come on <laughs> literally at 630 and say, that you was the worst experience, <laughs> the worst thing, the yeah. worst experience I ever had in my entire life. Yeah. So, but we just don't know if he's going to say that. And if he is, Hey, we're all about positive criticism. It will only make us better for our next client. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it just so happened that, you know, when he did come into our office, it was a busy night. I mean, it was, it was mm. nighttime too. So yeah. like six thirty, seven o'clock came in and there were two other agents here. One was, um, Sue Bollinger, who is a full-time agent here. Um, and she was doing a, an analysis for one of her clients. And then, um, Susan Solis was downstairs in the basement doing, um, a zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, everybody's utilizing the, I was wrapping up, you were wrapping up yours. Um, Mary was, you know, dealing with some, some buyers in her office. Um, and I was just like, all right, where am I going to put all these people? (laughs) (laughs) But Wasn't it exciting to have people? It was, I took pictures of Sue and Susan, uh, you know, so, so that was fun. Um, but Mm -hmm. But yeah, so, uh, so hopefully he has some great things to say, but, um, but this is sort of, uh, you know, different for us because, you know, we always get all the time, you know, we hear you, we hear you on the Mm. radio and all this stuff, but, you know, and we can sit here and tell all of you listening to us what the process is, but unless you go through it yourself, you'll, you, you won't really know what it's Mm -hmm. like. Um, it's definitely an experience that you have to experience, um, Mm -hmm. to, to really fully get it. Um, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just trying to get on Facebook. So if anybody has any questions, you want to let people know how they can get in touch with us tonight. Yeah. So you can give us a call at the studio. Ben is waiting patiently by the phone for somebody to call him. Um, 781-837-4900. Um, you can text Sharon because she's Mm -hmm. super famous down here on the South shore. (laughs) So you can call her or text her at 781-294-4848. And we're also live on Facebook. So you can, um, you know, go to McNamara broker team. You can go to Boston connect real estate. You can, um, friend request Sharon Costa McNamara and comment on our video there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so do we want to sort of jump into a little bit of what we're going to be talking about before John joins us, um, is it's a follow-up to last week's show. So, um, the reason why John is coming on and giving his experience, uh, with our team so far would, is because last week we talked about, should I stay or should I go? Mm -hmm. Um, so we wanted to follow up with that because it's, it's a question that John is asking himself now, Mm -hmm. you know, should I stay in my home, um, or should I go? And that prompted him to sort of, um, reach out to us and, Mm -hmm. and sort of start that, um, 
start that locomotive. Do you want to tell our <laughs> listeners some of the key points we hit upon last week when we were talking about this subject? Um, yeah. So, you know, first is, you know, what are the main reasons for wanting to move in? And it could be a lifestyle change. So you're getting married or divorced. There's been death. There's, you know, relocation for work. You're right sizing, retiring. You know, there's so many different reasons why somebody would want to move. Um, and Taking advantage of this mm-hmm. market. Yeah. Taking advantage of this market. If you can, I mean, some, some people, you know, have more than one home, so they might have a vacation home somewhere or a second home somewhere, and they're able to sort of transition to that second home and make it their Mm full-time location. Um, you know, so that's, that's a reason. So the first question is, you know, you know, what are the reasons for wanting to, to move? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to read too. <laughs> so, um, cause you didn't do the agenda. Oh, tonight. I didn't exactly. do the agenda. So I'm a little thrown off here. So what is the upside of selling right now? Um, so w- what would you guys say? Obviously the, the market yeah. is strong. I mean, the, the ups for selling right now is that, you know, people are getting, you know, emotional value right now, which, is, you know, that's one of the, the mo- more difficult aspects of me doing analysis for people right now is really helping them understand how I get to the number of the value of their house and really staying at that number because some people are like, doesn't that seem low? Yeah, but we really have to price it according to the comparisons that we have. So there's a part of me that just feels like instead of using six months comps, should we be using three month comps? Because those are higher, but like the appraisers are going to use the six months. Yeah. I think you have to take into consideration the bigger picture, but, um, and it's, it's a lot of our under agreement properties. So I think it's low in comparison to what people are hearing. Right. So Mm. if you're using your, you know, six months ago sold comps, um, and we're using up to six months. So that's kind of the swing. Um, and then also future forecasting what the under agreement properties are going to do. So that is taken into consideration, but Mm -hmm. that can always change. So you really need to price accordingly to your souls and then let the under agreements help you out later on down the road. Something that just popped into my head is like, okay, so take, um, you know, Herringbrook for an example, we received 40 offers on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we already tired just thinking about (laughs) we sort of already, you know, talked about it's it's not just about the number the the price that's on Mm -hmm. the offer Mm -hmm. it's about the contingencies so you know somebody could have offered you know say I put one two three main street on the market for five hundred thousand but somebody wanted it so bad that they offered a million dollars for it okay Mm -hmm. so that's what one person would have paid for it but maybe their contingencies didn't make Mm -hmm. it so they could you know, Maybe that's a feasible so, offer. you know, the, the seller accepted something that was lower. So like, those are things that like, you know, appraisers don't know. It's like somebody would have yeah. paid this, you know, X amount of dollars for it. So, and I'm just bringing it up because, you know, some of our agents, you know, they sort of have questioned what number that they landed mm-hmm. on and was sort of weary about, is this going to appraise? So when they meet the appraiser, they have, they've, brought every single offer that they received on it. And, you know, they can say, Hey, yeah, we were on the market for X amount of dollars, but I got 10 offers and every single one of them were over. So Mm -hmm. these, these are what are sort of driving the, the buyers. Um, and this is the reason why everything is sort of going Mm -hmm. so over. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yes, absolutely. Emotional value. It's just sort of, and it's nothing I can predict. I mean, there might be one house where people get very emotional about, and then there's another house that people are not so emotional about. They're emotional in the opposite way. Like, eh, I'm not for me. So um, what time do we have? Because I know that our caller is going to, oh, we still have a few minutes actually uh, to keep on discussing what we talked about last week. Oh, he is on the line. All right. Well, we're going to finish up some of our thoughts here. Uh, should I stay or should I go? Any other follow-ups to that? Um, well, I, I see here who does the market benefit the most. So, you know, it not, not necessarily like is a buyer or a seller, but like in what scenarios could each, mm-hmm. each of them benefit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think from, from a seller perspective, I'll take that, Mary, um, as always. <laughs> um, as always. Yeah. So from a seller perspective, I feel, you know, sellers who have another home to go to or another place to go to, whether that's, 
you know, maybe a home that they own, maybe they're snowbirds and they have some place down in Florida, or maybe they can just stay with family. Those people, in my opinion, are in the best position right now because they can take advantage of these higher numbers um, that people are giving. Um, and I feel like the numbers are going to stay high for a, a while because these comps, now that we're selling them, they're going to be good for six months. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So you're just going into a higher time the next six months going exactly. forward. So that's why a lot of people, I think, hear us say, when do you think the market's going to, or they ask, when, when do you think the market's going to cool down? And we're like, well, not anytime soon, because right now we've kind of been kind of along for the ride but those comps are going to become truer as they sell. Yeah. So our sold comps, emotional valued sale comps will be the value of our listings coming up for the next six months. But I feel that we probably will see a slowdown of over price, like going over that number. I am already seeing on my side, working with the buyers, less competing offers than we were seeing previously. So where it was 27 offers, 30 offers, 17, you know, Mm -hmm. it, those numbers have kind of dwindled down to 10, five, Mm -hmm. eight, you know, like somewhere in that realm, which we like to see. I mean, every less offer is a better fighting percentage Mm -hmm. or chance for our buyers, but these offers right now, like these closings that we're going to have in the next couple of months are really the, they're dictating what our fall market is going to be and the prices at what price they're going to be at. But that's my prediction. We've been pretty good with our predictions. You know, yeah. <clears throat> I predict that we will see less paying way over asking. Um, I hope so. Come fall. The last thing that I want to talk about before we move on to John is, you know, who, who's having the most difficulties in this market? you know, is it buyers who don't have a larger down payment? Like what, what do you guys see is who's having the most difficulty in this market? I, so I would say from, it's almost, um, uh, even market for me, in my opinion, with the buyers Mm -hmm. who are your FHA math housing, lower down payment, maybe a 3% or a 5% buyer. Um, and potentially some of the buyers that need help with their closing costs, mm-hmm. um, to get into like the fr- kind of, not necessarily even just your first time home buyer, but that tends to be the demographic that we see there because mm-hmm. they didn't sell the house and gain equity or anything like that. They're kind of just starting out. So those buyers, um, in, you know, a, I'm just put, putting out there like below a 350 price point, even for condos. They're really, really struggling right now, especially in the South Shore in the market that we're we're primarily operating in, because uh, prices are so inflated and there it's heavily inundated with a lot of buyers, um, and it's just it's really hard mm-hmm. to compete against the buyers who have been able to save money through the pandemic. Yeah, and it's uh, it's funny because we've been talking about this it seems like all year now, but it's. It's sad because here we are, and as a listing agent, I do it. I mean, you know, Michelle Fay ended up getting several offers. I think she she ended up with maybe nineteen offers or something. Nineteen, I think, wasn't it? Around there, anyways. Yeah, for her Cynthia uh, Road listing that she got, and you know, going through those offers, it's you know, there's so much you have to do, like you know, weighing your options with those. But it's interesting how when you look at things on a spreadsheet, it's very easy to say. Why do a VA? Why do a home sale contingency? Oh, I don't. Someone's washing their dishes or something. Um, and you know why? You know what I mean. So yeah. they're just like sort of cut off the list right away. <laughs> well, you know it's funny is because we all stayed late last night, and Michelle came in uh, and and sort of put everything together with you and, and um, with help Lori. from Lori as well. And then her clients came in, and I, I feel like she was in there for like five minutes, yeah. and then she comes upstairs and says, "Okay, my clients have accepted an offer." I'm like, <laughs> "What?" I'm like, "This is the fastest!" Like I have whiplash from this like it all like all day it comes down to like one moment and then they're like yeah like I feel like they already knew what was gonna happen before they got here and and they accepted something and I'm just like wow you know when Sharon and Mary do this it's like eight hours later. And I'm like, hello, does anyone have an answer? That just says to me that there was a clear front runner of those offers. It was very like somebody came in and just blew everybody. It's Mm -hmm. it's that quintessential. 
um, I had, we had no other choice. It was an offer we yeah. couldn't refuse. Like that was the, well, she even said, you know, she did an offer deadline and, um, and she even said that like seven of them came in like all at once, all at like once. right at the end. And I'm like, I hate that. Yeah. Like I, I hate it. And I, I think I, agents do that because they're afraid that we're going to use one against another and all that, but like get over it. We don't have time to be doing that right now. Like just give us your highest yeah. and best. Yeah. So. Uh, that's what we do. Um, so we are just about at 630. So um, that was just sort of a synopsis and an update and a review of what our show was about last week. Again, we have John on the line with us and he is going to tell us what his experience was like. And Melissa has some really good questions for him. And again, I don't know how he's going to answer right now. I almost feel like Oprah Winfrey <laughs> and I just allowed like, you know, a star came on and allowed like <laughs> you can ask any question you want. No um, questions off limit. Yeah. One thing I did want to do at the top of our show and um, I'll do it right now because we're sort of at that 630 number is um, I just wanted from myself, from my team, our team uh, and from the Boston Connect real estate team of realtors. Uh, we just wanted to send out our um, heartfelt condolences to uh, Liz Bone and her family. Um, and Liz is a real estate agent in the industry. Um, she is an owner of a company as well as I am. And I have to tell you, um, she uh, suffered a terrible loss this past week uh, with her daughter and the community really came together for her and her family, um, her husband, her married name, her daughter's married name is O'Shaughnessy. And um, I heard that Liz did the most beautiful eulogy for her daughter. She is a pillar of strength. And I know that the real estate community, I was talking to another agent from the company and I said, it's really nice to see how we are coming together mm -hmm. as a community of real estate agents in recognizing we are not competition, we are colleagues. And when one of us has fallen, we all feel that pain. And there were many of us that were just walking around sort of dazed at, um, you know, the seriousness of the situation and, um, you know, just had a newborn baby and, and, you know, it's just, it's heartwarming to see how our real estate community has come together. I am proud of all of you. And I know a lot of real estate agents listen to our show. Um, it made me just proud to be in this, the circle. And again, we are sending our love. We are sending our prayers and we are sending strength um, all the way to Duxbury, to Liz Bone and her family and the Shaughnessy, uh, O'Shaughnessy family. So God bless all of you. So with Very that said, well said. thank well you. Said. <clears throat> um, yeah, just, just a side note. I was, I drove through Duxbury this past weekend. So I saw all the ribbons and yeah, everything. And it was, yeah. it was, it was, you know, you get those moments in life where you just like sort of just sit there in silence and mm -hmm. you just, but you know, the reason why forces you to slow down. Yeah. Yeah. Heartwarming. It, you know, that just to see the community come together like that. And um, yeah, you know, so again, we'll continue to pray for her and her family. Um, all right. So we have John joining us tonight. John, can you hear us? Hello. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he got bashful hey. for a second. <laughs> I know. Well, and John's not his real name. So <laughs> he's probably like, what? <laughs> he's talking to me. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, we're giving you a fake name <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> Play along with us. Uh, so, so we have uh, John on the phone uh, with us. He is one of our listeners here for uh, Talk Real Estate Roundtable. And we just wanted him to uh, join us tonight. And hopefully he wanted to join us as well <laughs> um, to go over his sort of experience so far with our team. Um, John, I know that you have been a listener of ours for a while. So um, I guess my first First question would be, you know, what prompted you into, you know, stopping into the office a couple of weeks ago? Well, my timing, I guess, was a little rough on you guys. And I, I didn't <laughs> really take that into consideration because I was just, I was driving by the um, you know, Pembroke Center and um, with the, with the thought of, um, uh, of, you know, talking, talking to you guys and, uh, and I didn't realize that it was that it was Tuesday at that point. <laughs> Sometimes we don't either. <laughs> Sometimes we look up and it's five thirty, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> I was just like, "Oh, I'm here." Uh, it looks like you know people were in there. I'm like, "Let's just let's go in and um, 
and get this, um, you know, get some answers, I guess, is what, you know, what I initially went in there for. Yeah. And now you're a radio star. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So you were in the area, so that sort of prompted you, but was there something that maybe you were thinking about? Like, where are, are, are you potentially thinking about selling your home? Is that what sort of prompted you to want to have a conversation with Sharon? Absolutely. So, so as pretty much as you guys know, and I think a lot of people know that it's a, it's a, the seller's market right now. And I'm, so I'm thinking what prompted me was I'm thinking about possibly it started by doing, uh, should I do my house over? Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then I'm thinking, okay, it, it, we're hearing about, you know, the price of lumber and the cost of materials and, and getting people to do it. And I'm like, this is actually probably going to cost me a lot more than say a normal market. Mm-hmm. And so before I began uh, begin this process of, of remodeling, well, it's such a good seller's market. What if I just, without doing anything to it, just sell it as it is mm-hmm. and, and, and relieve myself of those, of that, um, of, of the remodeling burden. And uh, because I'm fortunate because I do have a place that I can, I can go to uh, mm-hmm. in the meantime. So that's well, you, part of the process. Should I do it over or, or just sell it? And when you were thinking about that process, were you thinking, should I do it over and stay? Or were you thinking, should I do it over to sell it? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Oh, uh, well, thank you. I have a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a little of both. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm living here, so why not live in a, in a, a nice remodeled place or, um, and then maybe think about selling it. I, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I think eventually I would have been selling in five, five, five to eight years, say, anyway. Mm-hmm. So this may have accelerated yeah. the market, may yeah. have accelerated the process. Yeah. So, so you, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong. So you are seeing that it's a quote unquote seller's market and potentially you could get, um, you know, a great value for your home if it Mm -hmm. was as is. So that was sort of a driving factor as well as, as, Mm -hmm. all right, well, maybe instead of selling in eight years, maybe now is the time. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are feeling that way as well. Um, you know, there have been some, you know, analysis whatever, uh, that, uh, Sharon and Mary have gone on. And, you know, even last year where it was, Oh, you know, in the next couple of years, but then, you know, you see what's going on and all of a sudden it's, Oh no, like now is the time. Like now I'll, I'll do it now. Let's go on the fast track. Yeah. Exactly. Let's go. Could you do photos yesterday? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's interesting because I had another couple in the office with me before John came into the office to do the second um, appointment, but we'll get to that afterwards. But it's interesting because John hasn't been in his home very long. So for him, it's like, what a score, you know what I mean? Like, Hey, I didn't put anything really into it. He has done some things. um, And we uncovered a couple of things. So I'm excited for him to share that in a minute. But like the other couple have been in their house for a very long time from like 1997, you know what I mean? And for them, it's just time to move on. So that listing will be coming on the market next week. Yeah. 97 was a great year. Titanic came out in 97. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great year. Okay. Um, you weren't born in 97. So let's not. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, no, I was born in 91. But, oh, well, 97 was not great because both Tupac and Biggie died. So that was a thing. <laughs> uh, but Titanic came Throwing out. Throwing a little bit of pop culture. Uh, yeah, a little mm. bit of pop culture here. Um, anyways, back to John, <laughs> mm-hmm. our special guest tonight. Um, so, you know, he, here, here you are. You come in, you have a, a quick chat with Sharon set up an appointment, Sharon goes out to your home. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you sort of uh, talk about that process of, you know, Sharon, you going out there, um, John, you having Sharon at your home and sort of how you guys went through the house. Did you uncover anything? Did Mm -hmm. you, and what what, were your expectations? Yeah. What were your expectations of, you know, how that first interaction at your house would be? Um, Interesting. I, 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 
I just knew from listening to her on the radio and you guys on the radio that you knew what you were doing. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so basically I just, I just, um, you know, and had, had Sharon come down to check the place out with her eyes and her expertise. And, uh, and I, cause I'm looking at it, you know, my own way, which isn't necessarily the best, I guess. Um, it is for me, but, mm -hmm. but, but you guys are professionals and that's, I'm putting my, my trust in you guys. And it's interesting that you say you're looking at things in one way and I'm looking at things in another way. And I do recall with our initial conversation, and I have to be honest, like I felt a little bad because when he came that first Tuesday, it was very, very sort of rushed. I was like, I'm sorry, like I got to go, like we have to get on the show. And then um, he was very patient because another one of our listings actually took precedence because we had so many accompanied showings and things like that. So he was so gracious about understanding that. And again, he wants to, it's funny too, because I feel that people are nervous because he, he doesn't know, and he may right now, but I don't even know the answer to this. If he does want to stay or if he does want to go and they feel as if it's a waste of our time. And I, I always like, they don't want to bother us almost. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what my job is. Like, I truly believe that I, my purpose and our purpose is to help people make a big financial decision and whether they decide to sell their house or not, I'm hoping that I helped that person make that decision, you know, um, which, you know, I've talked to people out of selling their house. Sometimes it's just not the right time. But when I know, I remember one thing you were saying like, Oh, I, I have like collections and I, I have some, th and I was like, well, don't worry about that stuff. Cause like, I truly don't see it. And then yeah. he had told me about a couple of his collections and it's funny because I would have never picked up on them normally, like I would have seen them, but would have not thought much about them. But I do remember one little, um, like he has some cups, I'll just say that. And I was like, oh, I love that one. I love that one. And I remember you telling me about mm -hmm. it, but I feel like he over-exaggerated because I, I felt like, and you know, I have been into many hoarders homes and um, I, you know, I do a very good job with that. I, I know the process I did. A, we had a three family hoarder, right? Yeah. So it was all three floors. That I honestly thought by the way that John was talking, that that's what I was going to be walking into. Oh, yeah. So that's what, what my expectation was. And when I walked in and I was like, what the hell is he talking about? Like, this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see a lot of stuff. <laughs> I had done a lot of preparing because I, I had just, it, it, a lot more stuff in the house as, than, than, um, than when you actually got here to see it because I, I figured it's better to see it um, to be able to see it yeah. <laughs> as opposed <laughs> to seeing all kinds of extraneous material around. But, uh, well, that's a, a great point because, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, John, if you decided to sell your home, you'd be selling your home. You wouldn't be selling your collections. Mm -hmm. So in order for Sharon or a potential buyer to see that, you mm -hmm. know, there's things that have to be removed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether it's the carpets from the floor, so mm -hmm. people can see the hardwood or mm -hmm. they can see, you know, whatever the, the curtains being taken down or the, the cups or the collections, mm -hmm. you know, those are, those are the things that will go with you. Um, and unless you decide to, um, put it as part of the sale. Um, mm -hmm. but, but, and you were At talking about day. area carpets, area rugs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so just being able to, to see exactly what it is, you know, buyers would be purchasing. Mm -hmm. And I always say I go through as the eyes of a buyer because buyers are looking for what's wrong, not for what's right. You know, so that's, that's how I go through. Yeah. I think something, when we were talking about the agenda tonight, um, that's something that I had mentioned to Sharon is we hear from a lot of our clients that they want to get the house ready for us to come out. They, it needs to be just so it needs to, they don't want us to come out and kind of judge their houses basically. Like, even mm -hmm. though we're there to give it an opinion of value, they don't want us to judge them based on their house or things like that. So, um, that was something interesting, um, that I was talking to Sharon about earlier, just if, you know, was, was the process, was that something that you found yourself kind of thinking in your head, John, when you were like, oh, I'm going to have, you know, this, this person come out and give me a market analysis. I actually want it to shine in the best light that I possibly can, hence taking out some of the stuff. Yeah. I mean, yes. I, I mean, honestly, there, there was a little bit of that, but I didn't stress out over it. I just good, realized good. that 
there was this stuff has to go. It has to go at some point. Let's just move it out of here and you know get rid of it now. And I still have a long way to go, but that's that's um, uh, um, that's my own you know that's my own little process. That, One that box at a time. <laughs> yeah. John, you have two chairs and um, a couch, <laughs> and uh, no, it doesn't have much room. I know. I have to get rid of at something. <laughs> and one of these chairs is better go. <laughs> I already told you where I thought the two red chairs should go. Remember, we're going to open up those curtains. <laughs> so. Well, that's still, yeah, that's still work in process. Yes, I have, I have opened up the shades and um, mm -hmm. let light in and mm -hmm. um, I can see outside now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Mr. Sun, sun. Right. Yes. <laughs> We've been getting a lot of that. Yeah. Sun comes in the windows. That's, that's one of the reasons why was, I didn't want my collections to get faded. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's part, that's partly why. Then I know that. Um, I, I, know that I, you, I should put these up. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Sharon asks a lot of questions uh, when she goes on her appointment. So, John, were you prepared for some of the questions that she was asking? Were you surprised by anything? Not really. No, I knew she was going to be asking questions. Absolutely. Um, so I was my, I was, you know, I figured that was part of it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I always find it interesting, you know, when, when Sharon or Mary asks like, Oh, do you know how old the roof is? And, and people are like, Oh, I never really thought about it. I'm not sure. <laughs> like if they don't know the age of something, it's mm -hmm. like, you don't really think about it unless you're asked or have to think about it. So mm -hmm. there's, you know, some, some yeah. sometimes we have to tell, you know, buyers or buyers agents, you know, it's, it's unknown. The age of these yeah. things are unknown because mm -hmm. the seller doesn't know, but maybe they didn't know to ask when they were purchasing either. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of what it is yeah. most of the time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, all right. So, so I feel like we talked a lot about the first meeting. Do mm -hmm. is, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about when you went to, to his house, Sharon? Um, so I gave some staging ideas as well when I was in the house, you know, not really staging, but there was some things like where to put the red chairs. Yeah. Where to put the red chairs. Actually, we talked about that afterwards, but were there any, um, you know, like things or information that maybe I gave you while you were there that made prompted you to further investigate? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I have these, these beautiful vintage carpets um, <laughs> that, that are um, both probably 35 years old. Um, and wall to wall. initially I was, I was going to take them up as soon as I moved in, but I end up bringing stuff in and putting stuff on top of the carpet and it became a lot more difficult to move. So I just kind of forgot about it and lived with it. And, um, and then Sharon happened to mention, well, why don't you take a corner up and see what's, see what you have under there. And, and so I took her advice a couple of days later, I pulled the corner up and found that it, it, it is a hardwood floor underneath the, um, ah, the living room. Mm, surprise. I was so excited when he told me that when he came in for the second appointment. You love your older hardwood yeah. floors too. That's awesome. Well, what I said to him too was, you know, are you sure that there isn't hardwood under here? Because I could almost feel like a level difference, you know? Right. And, and he said, no, I, I definitely don't think so because look at this area over here. And I said, sometimes I that's the path. An area. Yeah. I felt an area in the floor that I, 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 I thought there was an imperfection in the floor mm -hmm. and I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to take the carpet up because I didn't want to discover imperfections <laughs> on the floor. So but she had mentioned that it could be the underlayments uh, bunched up or something. And that's exactly what it was. And wow. uh, there, there was no, no imperfections. It was that underlayment. She was right on right there. Yeah. See, if you didn't know, went, then the buyers would have moved in yeah. and ripped up those carpets and found those beautiful hardwood floors. Exactly. And now like, that's the thing he said, it's like 35 year old carpet. It's like green. And then I think it's a gold in the bedroom, in one of the bedrooms. And it's, those floors have been protected yeah. for 35 years. Yeah. It's like so exciting. Really, really nice. Mm. So the other, uh, the smaller bedroom that has the other, the other copy, because we, there was two copies in the, in the house and the smaller bedroom, I took that corner up and that also was a hardwood floor under that as well. Yay. We need a big cheering sound Woo. in the background. Like, yay. That's so yay exciting. Yeah, I heard that audience in the very beginning of the show. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was really excited about that when he told me. And that's, that's the thing when, you know, 
I loved that John was very open to some of my suggestions and some of my thoughts when I was in the house. One thing too, is John is a a wonderful photographer. So he is, yeah, he Mm. had some really, really nice photos that he had taken himself. Um, and some other like, uh, pictures and things like that, that he had in his house that I really, really liked. So, um, and he, he had them out on the back porch and I was like, why are they out here? They're so nice, but Mm. Oh, so let's get back to, okay. So we have to rush up 10 10 10 minutes minutes, left. uh, The second appointment. Yeah. So let's move on to the second appointment. So, so John, when you came into our office, um, you know, Sharon went over her market analysis with you. What information did you find most useful out of your second meeting with Sharon? Well, uh, there was a lot (laughs) <laughs> sorry about that were you here till midnight I'm a, data geek. I'm a data geek he was here with me on a friday night until 9 9 15 <laughs> i should have got us chinese yeah, it was, <laughs> so it was after work so i was already my I'm kind of at my end of the day anyway but <laughs> um and then but the information was really interesting and um and very informative and i could tell a lot of time went into into what she had done, had prepared. Um, and um, it's, I'm just looking at some of the stuff. Um, it's, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of good information and current, current information and, and uh, not just, uh, you know, six months, it was three months and, you know, both of them. And so you can really get a good handle of, you know, what the market is currently like. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you think like the, the approach that I take when I do my analysis is, you know, I don't really spend a lot of time on fluff. I don't, I, I don't spend time on all the marketing and we do all of that. We know how to sell homes. We don't talk. I don't talk about how many houses our team has sold. And like I mentioned it, cause I always say to people, you know, I don't have a nice graph. I don't have all these statistics. If you want that information, I'll certainly get it for you. But you know, I'd rather spend the time, you know, really analyzing what the numbers are, how we get to that number and really help, you know, the people make, you know, our clients make a decision on where they should price the home yeah. to gain the most from it. So that's why, and again, I, I don't really want to apologize for spending so much time on it because no, I think it's important. No, absolutely. And, and, Another thing I noticed is that you actually enjoy it. It looks like you are <laughs> enjoying it. Like you're trying, trying to dig up more information, even though everything you've already dug up, it's like, oh, what, what, what is this? Why, uh, what, can oh, we, you know, I can uh, literally why see this? her face in like, in my eyes. I can see it in my mind. Exactly how excited she gets when she's going through this stuff. Oh, it was amazing though, because we were looking at one of the comps and I was like, why is it that this house didn't sell over asking? I, I couldn't figure it out. Why was this house on the market so long? And I did, didn't I figure, I figured it out too. I, I can't, I don't really want to say yeah. on the air, but yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a reason and you found it. <laughs> yes, I, I, I will share that afterwards, but I don't yeah, want to get sued real, in the meantime. You're a real estate detective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So you had a very great second meeting with Sharon here at the office. Um, you know, your meeting, that's our five minute bell. Um, it, your meeting with Sharon, did you feel after you left or do you feel now you have gotten the information that you needed to make a decision if you are deciding to stay or go? Yes, absolutely. And I'd like to add, um, before, the, um, before it's over is I never felt rushed. I, I mm-hmm. always felt comfortable. I, I, even during that first meeting when I came in and everything was so hectic and everything, <laughs> I was the number one person and mm-hmm. uh, the number one client. And, and the, as time went on, it, it even seemed to, you know, it really seemed that way. Yeah. You know, even I, I realized that there were other things going on and, and, uh, and she was meeting with, um, meeting with someone I, I came a little early and um she waved and let me know she saw me and and but I always felt like I it was you know everything every everything was was good. Very mm-hmm. very good. I felt like I was an important um client. Oh, oh. I, I might <laughs> 
I was just going to say, you got to see Sharon's office. Not a lot of people get to see that. I know. Not many people make it up to the second floor. We brought you up to the penthouse. Yeah. You were were in the corner (laughs) office up there. (laughs) Um, In the studio. That was um, was, was, uh, an an added bonus. Oh, yeah. 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 And you know what? I'm so glad that you had that welcome and feeling because you know, over the fireplace, when we first moved in here in 2019, Melissa came up with the motto, um, a home to call our own. And really, truly, that's how, you know, our team and all of our agents here want our clients to feel that way at the end of the day. And that's, you know, I felt a little rushed and again, not rushed, but like, um, I felt, a, I felt bad that I knew that you were waiting up in my office and, but I was with that other couple and they deserved the attention and just sort of moving everybody around. Um, it, I'm glad that you did that. You were very patient, honestly. Mm, mm. And very quiet. It's, all, it's almost like we uh, <laughs> forgot, like Mary didn't even know you were up there. You were so quiet. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, no. A little housekeeping on my phone. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, you know, we just have a couple more minutes. You don't have to tell anybody what your decision is, but I just wanted to know if you had, you know, thought about a decision afterwards. Um, and you said that you did had, you, you, mm-hmm. you've sort of decided. Um, so that is, that's good. That's, that's the goal. We, yeah. we did that's our job. Goal. That's, that's whether, whether it's one way or the other, we don't care. We just, our job is to help you get to that decision. And it's, it's not all, it's not mm-hmm. all on you, yeah. you know? So just one, we have a few more second, a few more minutes here, but during this whole entire process, is there anything that you think that I could have, or my team could have done better to better serve you through this process? Not really. Everyone, everyone was really, was, was excellent. Melissa, Mary, and, Mm -hmm. and, and you, it was just the whole, the whole place was, was very Mm -hmm. inviting and, and, and no, there was no, really, it was perfect. Awesome. Well, we'll have you anytime. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you can, can welcome anytime. anytime. <laughs> um, well, any, any, final any, thoughts? any final thoughts for John? John, we really appreciate you yeah. coming on. Um, you know, some of the, the feedback that we get from our listeners is when we have, you know, real people on. So, mm-hmm. so the show that we did with, um, with Renee, who is one of, um, you know, Mary and Sharon's buyers who closed on our property. Uh, she, mm-hmm. she was a guest in people loved that show because it was, it was real. It was mm-hmm. part of the process. And, um, and you know, that's, you know, that's part of the re- reason why we wanted to have you on, not just because we like you, we yeah. like you, John, we like you, John. Uh, <laughs> but we wanted to have you on and sort of share your experience, whether it's good, better and different. And mm-hmm. we're, we're glad that it was good for you. <laughs> this is live. So we're very glad. Contribute to this. I'm glad I was able to contribute to the show that I listened to it. Uh, yes. So. Yeah. Awesome. And, and since nice. you called in, you know, our, you know, our deal here, we end up sending you a gift card yeah. right, for $25 <laughs> to Dunkin' Donuts. So yeah, we'll make sure we get that. <laughs> in right, the mail. I happen Donuts. to know your address, by the way. <laughs> you know where I live. <laughs> yes, I do. I yeah. uh, certainly do. Well, John, again, thank you um, for calling in. And again, you know how to reach us. So if you have any questions, feel free, you know, to just say, Hey, we're texting buddies now anyway. So um, again, we're really grateful that you took the time to do this and that you stopped in to see us. And if you do decide to sell, we would be honored to be Absolutely. your team. And if you decide not to sell, well, we're so happy that we gave you the information that you needed to make that decision. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Thank you so much, John. Okay. Well, um, we'll be in touch soon and thank you for having me. All Absolutely. right. Perfect. Uh, I do want to see those hardwood floors, my friend. So <laughs> <laughs> have a great night, John. Um, well, thank you so much to all of our listeners for uh, tuning in to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. We will be back next Tuesday. What's our topic, you guys? Mm, we're uh, you wa- waiving yeah. home inspection contingency. Yeah, if you're going to waive that home inspection contingency, what you should be looking at while you're looking at the house. Yeah. And, and final walkthrough. Walk yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great week, everybody. W- Thanks, Ben. FM Marshfield. Thanks, ladies. BMS the South Shore's awesome. first choice for life. He was so nice, wasn't he? He was really nice. I thought I was going to like well up a little bit. Oh, he was nice. I'm glad that we didn't even ask like I.